Hello guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, in this video, let's explore the ZBrush interface. Uh, let's imagine this is your very first today in the ZBrush and then when you launch ZBrush, you get something like that. Okay, you got a home page here. It's a, a welcome screen sort of thing. You can just close this one. And then um, sometimes you may get this uh, browser, uh, which is basically called the light box. So what is generally the ZBrush here is, uh, if you could able to see, uh, it is just like any other, uh, uh, you know, application in computer. It has the title bar, it has got uh, the menu bar or possibly the palettes actually. So you have the palettes here, which uh, are basically just click and expand them and then browse suitable options. Uh, if you see the palette here, unlike other Windows applications, this palette has got uh, some icons also. Like uh, if you see some other applications, you don't have any images in the menu but here you have so that's a uh, palette on the top and then uh, as you could see uh, this menus what you're seeing can be disabled or can be enabled uh, by this uh, button here and uh, we have uh, the shelf on the left side on the top and on the right side okay this uh, shelf has different uh, uh, you know options or features which can be used uh, for sculpting or for navigation and all that sort so uh, we have a tray also which is on this side so i can collapse this or expand this tray we have one on the right side we have on the bottom we have on the left side so in the tray you have a tool uh, palette or tool menu um, but before going into that uh, we'll see this uh, light box so light box is uh, basically a, a browser for browsing all the uh, features inside ZBrush and uh, they are separated by category uh, with these tabs so if you have to bring any projects or any Z, uh, ZBrush files you have this here in the project tab and uh, let's say you have to browse some brushes you can do that from here so um, we can switch off the light box here and uh, we can also use a keyboard shortcut that is comma and then the light box switches off okay and uh, if you uh, put cursor on any of the tools it uh, shows up a bubble uh, with the name and the keyboard shortcut if anything is there to it and also you can hold control and then put cursor on any of the options here and you get a very brief help or documentation of that particular tool okay so uh, we have a lot of palettes or menus sitting on the top and here on the tray on the right side, we have a palette called a tool. Uh, I can remove that palette from there. I can select uh, the palette from here, which is the same thing. And also you can using this small circle icon, I can place this in the tray like that. I can collapse this uh, menu and I can expand that. I can put whatever the menu here I wanted into uh, the tray on uh, the right side okay uh, so I can expand that and then I can collapse uh, that particular menu okay so I just uh, just hold shift and then uh, clicked on that particular tool so I'm only expanding the tool by pressing shift but it is expanding the preference the marker the layer whatever I've brought here just hold shift and click and everything will be collapsed you can remove this uh, palette from here just by clicking that circle there like that so just click and open it uh, so there are a lot of options uh, here available which are used for different purposes but uh, let's try to understand what is the Z zbrush and what would you do on the very first day so here i've got uh, in the tool there is an icon uh, which is showing up to browse tools you could see that tool menu and then we have two types of uh, objects one is 3d mesh and a 2.5d brushes okay you got both of them so i would like to uh, just click and drag here and uh, this area where i am dragging and painting is a canvas or sometimes a 3d space also right now it is a canvas because i am painting something and it's like any uh, digital painting application so we have uh, uh, some other brushes like paint brush also so I can select and just paint it. Uh, this is right now a, a ZBrush document. So you can go to the document and then you can save this file as a .zbr format. 
which is going to save your canvas, uh, not the 3D file. Uh, so if I go to the new document here, that resets mm -hmm. your existing work which you have done. So if you could see, there is a 2.5D brush. Uh, ZBrush uses a concept called Pixels and uh, Pixel, which sounds very much like Pixel, uh, is a pixel with depth. Okay. So if I just uh, paint here, you should be able to see the stroke has got thickness or uh, it, it looks like a 3D uh, model. Okay. So you have a lot of materials here, uh, categorized here into matte cap materials and standard materials. Let's say if I pick the gold here and then start painting, the stroke comes in the gold color. So this is basically a pixel with depth, which is called Pixel. And the canvas is trying to simulate 3D in a 2D space, which is what it is called 2.5D. So you got brushes here like Snake Hook. Uh, you can use a brush like Smudge to smudge them. You have uh, maybe fiber, fiber, uh, fiber brush to paint. Again, you can choose your desired material and also you can pick your uh, suitable color to paint them. And uh, all these brushes are basically used to, you know, uh, paint some illustrations which are abstract by nature. So you got a lot of uh, brushes here. And uh, also when I am creating a sphere, which is basically a 3D mesh, mesh. And also let me just uh, take a material and then start placing different primitives here in the scene. Uh, so it might basically look as if we are working with 3D, but no, we are still in the canvas because uh, you could check like, uh, let's say if I use the smudge tool, I can smudge those uh you know pixels so uh, i'll just press control n to reset this which uh, takes up brings up me a clear document so when i am uh, working on these brushes it's all about the uh, painting thing but uh, how do we get into the sculpting thing which is the 3d viewport uh, so 3d uh, meshes we have here okay so let me just take a sphere i just click and drag so when i just click and drag it's in pixels and if I click and drag still, it's in pixels. Uh, as you could see, I can just smudge them. So uh, when we are taking a 3D primitive, click and drag immediately. I need to switch this into the edit mode from the draw mode. So right now I'm in the draw mode by which I could place this sphere. So when I click this button here, edit, now I've switched into the 3D mode. I can enable this floor button, okay, floor grid, or you can press shift to P that brings up the floor uh, and uh, you got the 3d model anytime i can change the material to this uh, in zbrush we can enable the wireframe on the shaded mode by hitting this button here called polyframe or you can press shift f which brings up the wireframe on top of the model so you are seeing a 3d model but again there are two different types of models we have one is the primitive and another one is, is the poly mesh so all the models what you're seeing here are now primitives except uh, this one which is the star uh, it is the mesh actually but other and there's a z sphere if you ignore these two things all other uh, models are the primitives so what does a primitive mean it's a geometrical shape if you just scroll down the tool menu and expand initialize we have uh, certain things to control the sphere as a primitive object for example we have H divide, which stands for horizontal divide. And we have V divide, which is vertical divide. And also you have the size in X axis, Y axis and the Z axis. Uh, it is uh, ranging, I mean, it's ranging from zero to 100. So 100 being the highest value in this. And uh, let's say if I put this value to 50 and then put a value to 50, it looks a uh, 50 times divided model in uh, the axis and in the height. Now we have this option called coverage. If I just change the coverage, you could see if I'm putting a, a 180 degrees, it gives me half sphere, okay, which is this one. So let me just put a value of 360 and bring back. Now what that actually, I mean, why am I stressing on this? Let's say if I click and drag on this model, this model is in uh, primitive. And so my standard brush, which is a, one of the sculpting tools is not really working. Now uh, the message tells that uh, this is a 3d primitive convert into a poly mesh so how do i convert this model into a poly mesh just scroll this tool and here there is a button which makes this as a poly mesh so when i enabled poly mesh the the wireframe and the color given to the model is uh, like a green 
maybe i can keep changing those colors uh, which generally uh, in relation with the poly group workflow uh, so i will uh, just uh, switch off the poly frame and you should able to see uh, that color overlay is off okay this um, color overlay what you are getting here is just an overlay to uh, anything you have uh, material on top okay so actual material is just this is just a visualization of your wireframe or topology so uh, as i've converted this into poly mesh now if i take any brush and then drag i can able to sculpt this uh, model so this is uh, where you start sculpting your model but again when you are sculpting you often use some features to add more polygons uh, like you have divide you got dynamesh you got z remesher so let's uh, just think about this tool or discuss about this tool which is divide just i hit this button the model is divided so one face has divided into four faces when i divided it one time i can also press control d to uh, uh, divide it one more time there so if you press this button or press control d is the same thing so i've divided it for the next time which is subdivision level number 3 now it has actually given me 38802 polygons so when i divide it again this 38000 is going to uh, increase by four uh, folds or four multiple it multiplies four times so now it is 155000 so i can keep dividing this model until i reach the uh, the maximum uh, capacity of handling the polygons per sub tool so right now i've got 2.4 millions i got 9.9 millions then uh, you got 39 millions then now you should end up getting that uh, sub divisions working here okay So I've divided this model eight times, and then if you could see, my ZBrush is comfortable uh, in in you know uh, sculpting, and it's very free. However, if you do the same level of divisions in any traditional 3D softwares, you may get the lag in the uh, workflow. Okay. Now, if I'm rotating this model, you should able to see the model is showing up its lowest poly, and then when I release it, it's showing up the high poly. So it's like uh, you are projecting onto uh image uh, with some kind of pixel technology i guess uh and uh, it's it's projecting the stroke onto the model and when you just move it and you should able to see it's not showing up its highest quality i think that's one secret uh workflow about this i mean some about the zbrush why it is able to handle this many polygons uh we have a few options here which are basically used to navigate so we have move i can click and drag this and uh, i can move left and right uh just i need to press this move button and then drag left and right or up and down like that then we have a zoom i can go close and go away i mean zoom in zoom out i can do and then we have rotate where i can rotate the object you can go to the transform palette and here you have uh, these options like move a zoom and a rotate option sitting here there however i use a uh, uh, the shortcut method uh i just click on click in the empty area and then drag it then you should able to see um, that i'm able to rotate this model just in empty area just click and drag it if you hold alt and drag it uh, you are moving this object left and right and up and down now if you press alt click in the empty area and then release the alt then drag you are doing zoom in and zoom out okay and uh, if i just move this or i'm away i mean the model is away from the center i can click this button and then the model comes to the center okay or you can just press f and it comes to the center okay and uh, you have uh, the subdivisions where i can slide it like that and they can i can switch to the fifth subdivision level or maybe i can go to the second or i can go to the first subdivision so i move uh, from a uh, current subdivision level like right now i'm in the fourth subdivision level i can move from 4 to 5 just by pressing d so i'm not uh, dividing it but i am moving from already divided model is there i am moving from fourth level to fifth level now in 5 i press d that goes to 6 okay let's say if i press shift d so right now i'm in the sixth subdivision level i'll go to the fifth one now i'm in fifth i'll go to the fourth i'm in fourth i'll go to the third second and then first so i can do that here within i mean with the shortcuts okay let's say i'm in the second subdivision level and uh, as you could see we have uh, um, the highest one is 8 so let's say if i am 
in the fifth subdivision level if i hit delete lower so one two three four five and up to eight times or nine times so if i delete lower the four three two one will go away so now the lowest subdivision is one and then you got two then you got uh, four four is the highest i can um, also delete the higher subdivision levels at any particular time and that, that deletes that subdivision level so i have only two subdivisions now out of uh, your uh, eight subdivisions so uh, anytime you can uh, reconstruct the subdivision if uh, there is no uh, sub i mean levels here just need to hit that button so uh, whatever polygons we have that is some um, 2.4 million polygons we have so when i reconstruct uh, it will divide it to a uh, one fourth of 2.4 and that puts in subdivision level one and then you got 2.4 which is subdivision level two so i can keep doing the reconstruction and i can regain our subdivision uh, uh, whatever we have here okay uh, let's say if you have got a model and whose uh, my smooth history is not available you can just reconstruct the subdivision and it's super easy okay uh, so if you are uh, doing this i mean if you have sculpted something here you can go to the file and then save your file and it will save in dot zpr format which is z project and any other images which are associated with the project okay so project is basically a com uh, i mean it's a complete file which uh, we may have some z tools and other images a part of that so uh, you have the history here you can just uh, go to the history back and forth like that but if you are standing anywhere in the history and then when you're sculpting here so whatever the history which is there uh, above that will be deleted and the new deleted history will come here and it's all gone there okay uh, so you have uh, uh, undo and redo options here control z and control shift z so you can access that undo here okay uh, as i told you can save your file from save as but don't save your file from the document which is going to save your canvas rather than your 3d scene so that's really important when you're doing with zbrush okay